Hi, everyone. Welcome to Art and Talk. Thank you for being with us today. I'm Leslie Sue, the host for Art and Talk. If you've been watching us for a while, you know that Art and Talk is all about meeting artists and being inspired. We embrace the traditional arts and the spiritual arts to bring you diverse and quality interviews to watch and to be inspired by. So today we're bringing you our final artist from the gathering exhibit that is currently on at the Cultural Council for Palm Beach County in Lake Worth Beach, Florida. We hope you've had a moment to check out some of the other artist videos. Uh, we presented a group of highly talented artists and um, from the exhibit, there is actually a total of 16 artists. So you can jump on their website or if you're here locally in South Florida or traveling through, you definitely wanna check out the exhibit. So today we have a contemporary visual artist and we're gonna be diving into his art and his journey. And we're gonna be getting a sneak peek into his studio through a little mini video. And we'll also be looking at his uh, artwork that's on exhibit at the Cultural Council, as well as a select group of others. So again, thanks for being with us. I'd like to welcome our guest for today, Anito Michelini. Hi, Anito, welcome. Hi, Leslie. Um, Thank you so much for being with us. Where would you like to start in your rich tapestry of contemporary art? Well, um, I was born in Brazil, and I live here in Boca Raton since 2006. And uh, I became an American citizen in 2015. So uh, I studied art since. 60 years ago, 65 years ago, it's a long time. And uh, I studied in a vocational school. So then I got my graduation in a advertising school and started as illustrator and drawing storyboards in advertising agent. Um, a few years later, I became an art director, uh, working in, in creating ad campaigns uh, for for many clients, national and multinationals, and big agents in Brazil. And uh, I retired uh, from my my advertising career in 2003 uh, when I was working in. Macanerickson, Mexico, Mexico City, as a creative vice president. So from that time to now, I am totally dedicated to my uh, career as an artist. Okay. So, I'm wondering, Anito, with your background in um, graphic design and being an illustrator and your whole advertising career, how has that influenced you today with your current art? How has that played an influence? Yeah, I have uh, many influences from, from the, this kind of, when I, I creating uh, logo marks and, uh, you know, when when you create a campaign, uh, the the part of the art direction you have to study and understand about colors and about the reproduction of the because in, in many, many magazines today uh, you know, it's, uh, everything is more more easy because everything is digital. But uh, 40 years ago, <laughs> it was very difficult. So you have to, to follow uh, everything, every, uh, every part of the work 
Um, and for that, you have to understand how everything works. So in terms of the printing and uh, correct, uh, correct color. So that part influenced me too much in, in, in uh, you know, wh what I do now because uh, was, uh, I worked uh, with photographers and uh, producers. So each guy you, you work together following the, the photos for the advertising. I did many, many launches of cars in Brazil. I worked for um, Volkswagen and uh, General Motors many years. So I launched many cars. So I had to follow, do the, 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 the photos for the, the ads and the filming for the, the movies, for the, the, the TV, you know, commercial TVs. So uh, I, I learned a lot with these people and I use they in my in my uh, studies for the, the my art mm -hmm. very influential mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so that had a huge influence and sending me well uh yeah 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 absolutely yeah um and you have this brilliant sense of space and movement and color, as you were saying, and highlighting and identifying shapes. Before we get into looking at some of your artwork, can you tell us a little bit more about where you're coming from in terms of what you visually represent? Well, I started uh, like the, uh, many other artists, in maybe the artists started painting, landscapes and uh, portraits and plain air. I did it, all of this until the 80s. Then uh, I, I knew many, uh, some artists, friends of mine, who talking with them, uh, my, my mind opened for other things. So I start to painting landscape, but from my imagination. And then I went to the colors. Uh, I, I, that, in that time, I learned what important is the reflection and the, the um, um, heat of the color, the, the people. So, you know, um, uh, in color, you, you have two parts in color. You have the, the rational part, which is the physical color, uh, but you have the subjective part of the color the feeling of the color. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, a color is, uh, as I say, is uh, like uh, people. They react with each other, <laughs> different from color to color. So this is what I, I learned about the color. Uh, I knew a great uh, Brazilian artist who, uh, wrote a book called From the Color to Non-Existent Color. Non-existent color is the optical color. It's when you put uh, yellow and to be very, uh, very simple, together, the red and the yellow, in the middle, you will see uh, orange color which is the, the optical color. So the, then this is the, the 
the mainly thing I start to study in that time in the 80s. And I did to, to, to reach this uh, knowledge, uh, I did many, many series of works. You know, I, between each, each series, I, I used to paint in uh, uh, landscapes and uh, do portraits from the family, for the friends. And uh, I go on vacation and do some watercolors in plain air, just for fun. But the, the important part of my work was in the studio and uh, doing this series. Uh, you know, you understand? I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. <laughs> so it sounds like in the 80s, uh, you spent time in Mexico City. Uh, that really seemed to open you up, as you said, you know, really looking at color from a lot of different um, perspectives. And um, also I was seeing in your bio that um, you really were analyzing and studying the, the rich culture in Mexico. Um, and that seemed to kind of open things up for you. And also in Brazil, the concrete art movement, where it seems like you were looking for new techniques, you were kind of thirsty to kind of be open to some other artistic expressions. Yeah, yeah. I, in, uh, Mexico is a country where the color is, <laughs> is the thing. Everything is colorful there. Everything is colorful. And uh, I spent three years working there and visiting many places and uh, studying. It was very, very rich. Uh, be there. And uh, the, I have, um, he, he passed away 10, 12 years ago, my friend. Uh, it's some um, guy which starts with a group of the concrete art in Brazil. It's very important to me that are in many museums in the world. His name is Luis Saciloto. And this guy, I start to, he came to see an exhibition I was doing in, in Sao Paulo. And he know me, like my watercolors, like my colors, and so, ah, you have to, to learn something more about color. So I invite, we became very close friends and I used to go to the, his studio uh, each two or three times a, a month and then talking about the, the work, uh, drinking wine, uh, <laughs> eating salami, uh, you know, jamon, this, things and I spent a lot, a lot of fun time with him. And I learned to do uh, egg tempera with him using the, from, from the scratch, from the egg, doing the mix with the, the ingredients, then put the pigments and uh, uh, egg tempera I, is my second favorite uh, uh, technique. My, my favorite is watercolor, but egg tempera is very similar to watercolor. You can paint in, in, in canvas with some transparency, you know? You, you, this uh, uh, permits to the, to the to do some effects that is very difficult to do with the uh, oil or, or acrylics. And I, I temper is very good for this and I, a lot because it's, it's up to the, the, the tone the, is, is um, pastel, you know, the smooth, very, very, very nice uh, finishing. Mm -hmm. Anita, let's take a look at the video of your studio. 
Okay. Is there anything that you'd like to share about it before we take a look at it? Oh, I did some images just people feel the day huh? because it's a little studio. It's a, a, a bedroom I transformed into a studio. Mm -hmm. In Brazil, I used to, to use a big studio in my house. So now I, I don't size. <laughs> and, uh, but you can see in the video that some uh, moleskine, I use moleskines uh, to do uh, uh, sketches and uh, study the colors and the, the, the work, no? Oh, you see there, basically, uh, this is the ambience, just this. Yeah, all right. Let's take a look. Give me just a moment and we'll pull it up. My book. I love that we really get a good feel for a very like cerebral but yet cozy kind of environment in, in your studio and get to see some other things of interest. You know, there's Mickey Mouse, there was, you know, your your books of artists, cars, your guitar, hat, some other like uh, pictures, maybe a family. So it's just this really nice environment that, that we get to see where you do your creative work. Yeah. It, 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 it's like uh, you are in home, you know. When when you leave the country where you live the more than sixty years, you you have to to uh, maintain near you some uh, remembrances, has some memories from your your life. So I, say, I have my, my friend uh, Mickey Mouse. So. You saw um, it's a '93, a car. It mm -hmm. was a special uh, serigraphy I did for the, the um, Indianapolis Motor Museum, and uh, the I did some. I I used to be a to fly air models when I was young. And uh, so I had many things uh, which remember the, the aviation. So I had the air models, I have um, photos, I have a, um, and I did a special series in Brazil uh, in the eighties. I did it, I call it the memories from the, the childhood. And I painting from my imagination all the things I used to do with friends, uh, flying air models, and uh, you know this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I sold everything in that, that 
was my my best exhibition. I sold everything. <laughs> Anita, um, we'll get ready to look at some of your paintings. Um, I'd like to take just a moment to talk about contemporary and abstract art. Um, so as you were saying, you know, you've done many landscapes and drawings, illustrations, portraits and whatnot. Um, moving into the area of abstraction, contemporary art, as you were saying, you know, playing more with the imagination. Um, can you tell us what does this style of art bring to you aesthetically and creatively as an artist? And if you could also um, tell us in your own words, uh, some people really relate to abstract contemporary art and some um, don't really get it. Could you kind of help give a little more of an explanation of, of this art to you and, and your creativity? Well, you know, artists call it the Paul Klee, a Swiss uh, artist. He used to say that the job of the artist is show to people what a, what uh, they can see. <laughs> so this for me is the sense of the abstract art. You, 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 you have to um, put in, in, the, in the world something that some people will bond, you know, uh, many of the, my, my works, people say, oh, I don't understand what you do. Uh, what do you think about this? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, explain how. It, this is from the heart. So I have a, a series like, uh, for example, I, I did a series, uh, I call it Ojaibas. Ojaibas is uh, inspired in castles and uh, church with this format, you know, the medieval format of the uh, windows with the um, stained glass, this thing. So I transformed this in a, in a series of abstract art, which just the, the shape of the drivers is that all the other things is about color and emotion, you know. Uh, my my uh, recent work uh, is uh, I did this during the all this time of the pandemic, the last two years, and for, for me the first year of pandemic was more uh, more tough than uh, other people's because I did um, two surgeries, hip replacement in each leg. <laughs> so the pandemic uh, uh, told me to stay in house, but besides that, I can't go out because I was uh, recovering of the surgery. And but what I do now, because I have to do something uh, during this period. Huh? And I start to think if it, two people was talking about color, uh, how, how can represent this visually, you know? And I start to do some studies and finally I found this um, uh, form of the two heads in front of each other. And some has some color, the other had some colors and it's supposed they are discussing or they are talking about the preferences about color. And it was very interesting because 
I did, I, I think in the, the beginning, I would do three, four uh, words, but I'm now in the more than 50. So it was very rich to explore. And now I, I'm studying to do uh, uh, 3D uh, uh, scripture with the, the heads. You know, then this is the 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 people see this. You can't imagine it. Um, what they are talking, based in the feeling of the color, which you, you can like red and purple or green, yellow green. And other people go. Oh, yellow green, no. Oh, purple. My wife is uh, black, clear. I don't like purple. I don't like purple, but I like. <laughs> so different people has different reactions because the heart and because the retina uh, re receive the, the reflections of the, the color, the light in the color. In a different way. So you can, this I think is uh, difficult to explain to people, but not totally, uh, uh, let me say, abstract. It's easy to imagine. Mm -hmm. Difficult to explain, but easy to imagine. Mm -hmm. yeah. You saw this? Suddenly, mm -hmm. two, uh, two heads, so two different colors. Mm -hmm. One head, I don't know. I I love your in-depth study of color from just so many perspectives, and the whole conversation presented visually of two heads talking about color and and having this whole like discourse over it. Let's go ahead and pull up some of your images, Benito, and have you elaborate on them. Okay. Just a moment and get them up. Okay. This is um, part of the sunset from my point of view. I love the whole sense of rhythm, the sense of color, the sense of pattern. Tell us a little bit more. Um, <coughs> when you were getting ready to create this, um, what was your thought process of, of looking at the sunrise, the sunset in, in this particular way? Oh. In this case, I was working in a series using this um, triangle as a, a geometric form to, to do the thing. So I did many, many uh, paintings using this format and changing. Uh, Difficult to say, but when, when you are you are in, in immersed mm -hmm. in a way, everything automatically transform the image you are seeing in a in the thing you are working in at the moment. Mm -hmm. For me, it works uh, like that. Mm -hmm. so now uh, I. I saw people and uh, I, I can transform immediately in heads talking about <laughs> color. Mm -hmm. you know? And this is a, a Florida, Florida is, it's amazing because we live in, in the middle of the, the color. It's different from Mexico. Mm -hmm. Here is the natural color. Is the you know the the 
the sea, the nature, the, the trees, everything is colorful in, in Florida. And maybe that's influenced me to do this. Uh, yes. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. All right, let's go to the next one, Anito. All right, now this one is the one that's on exhibit currently um, at the gathering um, at the Cultural Council. So the gathering theme was looking at how we gather together um, for celebration, for joy, for uh, a whole variety of different ways with loved ones, family, and also out in society. So talk to us about this piece, if you would, Anito, and tying it into the gathering theme. Uh, you know, like, uh, uh, Jessica, the next one, can, can hear. And uh, he told me, I, I would like you to participate of the, 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 this uh, gathering uh, exhibition. You have something with the people getting together. And I, I told her, I don't have this. Uh, but I have something who can uh, represent this, this uh, thing, which is, you know, in Brazil, the carnival is famous. You have in Rio de Janeiro uh, a beautiful parade every year with the, 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 the call the samba schools with uh, parade with the uh, themes uh, could be history, could be about football, could be about uh, uh, everything. And is is uh, this uh, parade is are uh, a good example of the reunion of the people and the colors. That's, that's the spirit of this uh, painting I did. I, I was inspired about the, the parade, mm -hmm. the people dancing and uh, flo flowing through the, the avenue, uh, dancing, you know, uh, uh, doing movements, Mm -hmm. The spirit of this uh, painting, mm -hmm. and uh, she likes it. So okay, it's good for my my exhibition. So mm -hmm. that was... uh -huh. I I love it, and um, Anita, it's such a fascinating visual representation of the carnival, of the parade, of movement, of music, the sights and the sounds, everything that would be going on and representing it in, in this way. It, it's such a, to me, such a, a brilliant and uh, very like a multi-layered way of, of, of visually presenting um, the, the carnival. Yes, thank you. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and go to the next one. Okay, and here we go with the, the dialogue with the, the two heads discussing color. This is uh, what I'm about. Uh, to you a few minutes ago. And, um, you know, two people talking mm -hmm. about color. This painting is right now in exhibition in, uh, in the Boca Raton Innovation uh, Campus. You, the, the, the Boca Raton Museum of Art mm -hmm. organized a special exhibition to do in the in the former building of the IBM here in Boca Raton. So uh, I, I submit three, three works and they select the three. And this is one of them. Mm. About 30 by 40 inches. Mm -hmm. And uh, it represents everything about the, my work because there are the colors, the people and technique and the, the geometric forms. Uh, 
is that like a, a summary of my uh, what I, I, I learned through the year. So this really represents, as you were saying, Anita, you and your work, your artistic way of expressing yourself. And what I find so interesting is, um, as we've been discussing the, the, the uh, conversation of, of art between two people, and it's interesting because it is, um, the mouths are not present. The whole conversation is going on in the mind. Um, I've looked at some other beautiful works of, of these and, and other ones of yours, and the, the color is always in the, uh, the mind and, and the brain and, and that area. So that's where like this communication is, is taking place. It's not a verbal communication. Like telepathy. Mm. Yeah. 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 All right. You, you, are, you got everything right. All right. Uh, this is the Florida sunset. Yeah. Okay. And okay. There we have you standing in front of the carnival kaleidoscope. I call it this carnival kaleidoscope. Ah, kaleidoscope. Yeah, the, the colors change all the time. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. And now we have one of your portraits. Oh, these two are my daughters. So on the on the left is Vanessa, and on the right Patricia. Vanessa lives here in Boca Raton, uh, near me. Patricia lives in Brazil. She's a uh, uh, doctor in music. Uh, she teaches in a uh, university of the um, Rio de Janeiro. Mm -hmm. And the interesting I put this for you is, well, our portraits, which I do from time to time, but composing the portrait, I use the icons, geometric icons I use in my, my work, in my painting. So, I did a, a, a series with this, uh, all this um, geometric paints about uh, Florida. And this is another series about the, the um, for drivers. I was talking to you about. I can show you something if you, if you want. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. This? Yes. No, here you have the same shape. We have a Vanessa's background. Mm. Yes. It's grass. You know? And it's, um, I don't know the word, it's stylization of the, the trees. The, you know? I can show you one more, just two. It's uh, like bushes with uh, a black cat. This black cat lives around here. Sometimes it passes in, in front of my, my window. Mm -hmm. And another example of the landscape is like this.
Oh, this um, form are in the in the in the portrait of my my daughter. Okay. You you have Leslie. You have to come in here to meet my student. I would love to. Absolutely. I show you a lot of things here. Or you you went to my my website. The yes. Uh, there are uh, some samples of all the series. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's quite an amazing um, collection and, and variety of of art that you have. And I love what you just showed us and showing like the repetition of, of different shapes coming through and in uh, landscapes and some of your other abstract geometric um, painting. Mm -hmm. We do need to wrap the show up. And you know, is there anything that you would like to share about your art and your journey that we haven't touched upon? <sighs> I, I would like to say that my there's a relief I could talk with you uh, because I were I was in panic to talking uh, alive in <laughs> with the people and I was very uh, concerned about this. So I think it, I now I my my I were. Uh, I might calm, calm down now. And uh, I would like to invite people to go to my website, take a minute to see um, some of my work. And um, I, I'm 77 years old now, so, I'm very happy to be here in the United States, in Florida, in Boca Raton, uh, in this county, Palm Beach. And um, I enjoy a lot to be here. And I, I have a lot of fun with the other artists and to participate in with uh, all the people. It's very, very, uh, enjoyable, all the people here is is for me is is Brazilian people is um, very similar in, in this yeah, thing like here the, the fraternity the community and uh, I I was born in Brazil but I basically I'm an Italian guy so I talk loud and I talk with my hands and I you know and I feel I feel good living here and I would like to do more things uh, I show my my work for people and uh, that's it. Yeah yeah absolutely um wishing you the most success with um bringing your art um to you know, to um, our country and and um, abroad and, and everywhere. And you have such an interesting use, and you know, of space and composition and the, your whole placement, in addition to color and shape and, and form, it's really such a fascinating um, look inside like your mind and, and your heart and, and this whole representation of um, the style of art that you express so beautifully and so eloquently. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. You. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let us know what is the website so that people can uh, jump on there and check your work out. This is www.amydoarts.com. All right, very good. And I definitely recommend uh, going to Anita's website and checking out um, a whole variety of art. You even have some photos on there kind of going way back and you just get a really good feel for your history and all the different um, places that you've been and all your different influences. It's been such an honor and joy to connect with you. Thank you so much, Anito. My pleasure, thank you, Leslie.
All right. And again, much success. Thank you so much, everyone, for connecting in with us and watching Art and Talk today. Again, if you are in the South Florida area or, or, or passing through uh, until January 15th, you do want to check out the gathering exhibit at the Cultural Council for Palm Beach County in Lake Worth Beach. You can also go on to their website if you're not local and you want to check out more about the other artists that are also exhibiting there as well. Thank you always for the time you take to watch our artist videos, stay connected with us on our YouTube channel and also on Facebook. And we'll talk soon on the next Art and Talk. Until then, be well and be blessed.